uh, Yanini. Actually, these readings are connected with um, a workshop we are having, uh, which is called Poetry in Motion. And uh, today it was really interesting to see the many ways in which poetry is connected to motion uh, through translation, of course, and uh, uh, and so moving through languages and through different spaces. But Yemini's work brings poetry in motion also in a different way, in the sense that she's also a filmmaker. Actually, she uh, received a Master in Fine Arts at the Department of Film uh, of the uh, School of the Art Institute here in Chicago. So uh, being also a filmmaker, uh, she, today she will uh, also show, uh, show us, share with us uh, two of her uh, video poems. Um, and then she will talk about uh, some of the, uh, her work, as a, the, the work, the process of composing these video poems. And then she will also read um, some of uh, her um, poetry. Um, her translator is also here, Steve Brad Bradbury. So it's a really uh, Bradbury, sorry, Steve Bradbury. That's right. They called so, me that when I was in elementary school. Okay, <laughs> Steve Bradbury. And so, and the bookstore also has uh, some of her work. I really love the titles of her books. This one, a moth laid its eggs in my armpit and then it died. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And just this title gives you a sense of the nature of uh, Mimi's poetry. You know, a moth laid its eggs in my armpit and then it died. It's just completely disorienting and also invites you to imagine what that means. I mean, you know, a moth legging your, I mean, it, it just so many different associations and also connecting together so many different um, elements of, of life and of natural life and of human life. And I think this is also another way in which Mimi's poetry sets words in motion. And sometimes, literally so. Today, for instance, we discussed some of our poems in which mountains and sea become verbs. With sea, I can see that the verb becomes, I mean, yeah, I can see that <laughs> the sea becomes a verb in the sense that the sea moves, but the mountain becomes a verb. This, I just cannot quite, still cannot quite uh, figure it out. And, and so it's this sort of enigmas that, uh, and the imaginative enigmas that Mimi's poetry offers to us. And one last thing I want to say is that uh, Mimi uh, in January and February is traveling in Indonesia. Uh, she was, she's doing a project uh, uh, learning about funerary uh, rites in Indonesia, and this morning she was telling me that uh, in Indonesia when someone dies, a family has to buy many buffaloes to have a big feast, and that's very expensive, and therefore often it takes time before a family can afford the funeral, and that's why often the dead person stays in the house for many, many days, and she visited years, the years and she visited a family when where a grandmother had recently died, and she was saying that guests are welcome, they bring good luck, and so she participated in this. And, um, and in many ways, in many ways, so this made me think of, I mean, today we also talked about translation as afterlife. And I just found out that afterlife is actually mistranslation. In fact, the real world that Benjamin uses in the famous essay is actually survival. And so today also this idea of life and death and survival and afterlife really uh, came up a lot in connection to poetry. So I was very happy to see all these connections coming together. Finally, uh, another of the various forms that Mimi's poetry takes is something like, I call divination poetry, but someone else has called it tarot poetry. She has some cards and she asks <coughs> people to ask a question and then she'll ask you to uh, pull a card and uh, that and that the, on the card is written a verse of her poetry and so her verses would give some sort of answer to your question. So maybe she will uh, share with us that kind of poetic practice as well. Okay, please join me in welcoming you. The first one, they are there, but now at least my thesis film in the School of Arts of Chicago, I shot in 2009, and the other one is was Steve, it was shot in 2020, uh, 2012. 
and so it's about in total it's about 18 minutes. So the way I make poetry video is kind of different from others. You know, usually people will take a poem and make image based on the poem, make a video. But because myself is a poet, I started to write poetry when I was 19 years old. But when I was 27, I, I decided I want to make poetry video, and I'm lucky I got I got a mission from the University <coughs> of Chicago. So I went there and <coughs> started filmmaking there. I had no background because my major is Chinese literature and great. I got another MFA in writing in Taiwan, and but I feel it's the kind of artwork I want to make. So my process, for example, the first one is uh, I write a few lines uh, in advance and I get some idea. And I, I went to collect image. I shot with six, 16 millimeter film camera, which is very expensive. So actually, I didn't get that much footage. I think I only collect 23 minutes. And then I went back to Taiwan to shot the footage, to collect footage, and then I, uh, I bring the footage back to Chicago and to process. So I didn't know what I get until I see the result, and then I got some idea. So I started to edit film, and I write more home, so it kind of it developed together. Yeah, it's a, everything is improv. Like, I have no idea what, what I'm going to get. I got ideas when I was Yeah. And for the second film, it, it, it takes me longer because I shot in Chicago, in New York, in Taiwan. Basically, where I move, I shoot. So it's a, collect, it's a collection. And this, uh, I don't know if you recognize anything in Chicago here. You see the Michigan Lake here? The sailing, the boat. Um, actually, the guy who built the boat is my husband. He passed away two years ago. And so I think it's very meaningful to show, it's the first time I show this film in Chicago. It's been over other places like in Europe and America, but I think it's very meaningful to show this film here because uh, he built a boat in Chicago. And only like on the very last day, when he finished the boat, we sail in Michigan Lake just one day. And the boat is in the garage, in this landlord's garage now. Yeah, it's been so many years. So I think I'm go I'm going to see the boat. But, but, um, after this conference. Yeah, so um, for me, this film means a lot to me because it's like the, it's the, the trail of me movie and also being moved. And it's some, some kind of market. So every time when I see it, I still have very different uh, feeling about it. Uh, so um, I would like to, do you have the handout in your hand? It's, uh, there's one poem stitch in place called the Mo the Mopar. The Mokar the Mopar. I published this actually this is the second version of this book and this book the title is also the Mo Car the Mo Bar because Che the car in Taiwanese is called is sewing. So I saw um, I went to a small factory and then saw in Bodier embodied the cover. Yeah, so just some kind of concept in this. Also, there are many pictures I shot in Chicago in this book. So I would like to read a poem.家里有牛有男人还厌他一枚常常在院子里打斜线有时不小心跨过一些猫脸爆炸也无所谓就算过这里也狗吠喜欢写重染般的字一粒一粒的血兔子里养了一叠婴儿蟹像玻璃弹
不断从眼睛挤出挤出墨汁与奶，滴滴答答。寂寞比水甜一点，鱼比海还舒眠。从此，我就要去方圆方圆，他唱。他越吹越远。
please play me with a tremble on my own. It longs to bear a book bag on its back, walk naked down the avenue. Later, he escorts her across the bridge, and midway experiences a temple, crisp as a cucumber. Their brows, mock moonlight, hang suspended in air. He rubs her eyes, rubs out a storied welt, and all the sweat is left there. Many people got this card, I don't know why, even for Donald Trump. Really? It's like no drop of rain. There is no drain, there is no raindrop that uh, can know which direction you will go. Oh, oh. really? Yes. Wow. Well. Wow. Well. So. It really answered your question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I think my question is very kind of strange question. Do they answer? Just show up like two or three times in the past two days. I don't know why. For yeah. Donald Trump, Trump show up twice. Oh. Like people ask the same question about Donald Trump, they get the same car. Can you repeat? Can you repeat what it means? Oh, um, there is no raindrop which can know uh, where it will go. I'm sorry, mm. where it will go, not where you will go. Yeah. Mm. Where, is it, where is the direction you um, you go? Yeah. Mm. So, volunteer number two. Will I have a child? <laughs> this is serious. <laughs> uh -oh. I don't want to be responsible. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well why don't you look at look, look at your card first? And then, if you don't like it, I have a drone at all. Oh, I can mistranslate it. Show up the first time. There are many cows never show up, but this one is the first time. I think the answer is. Yeah. 
So she's pumping off a bieda shu is is another shoe, so a mansion, and a rural mansion, and another and another tree. Yeah. Uh, you. What's that? What's that? Bieda shu. Bieda shu. Bieda shu. So, wow. <laughs> okay. Um, so, the what, what's the Japanese word for like a little? You know, like you have this like little mansion. It's a like family mansion. Benzo. 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 Yeah, Benzo. That's that's yeah. it's the Chinese word for Benzo. So, um, yeah. So another another tree. Another tree in which a uh, Benzo and another tree are together. So it's it's another tree. Okay, the, the the idea of having a child is another tree in which a, a rural mansion and another tree are together. And it sounds very lovely. Yeah, lots of trees. Yeah. 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 I guess so. Yeah. No, it's just responding to her poem actually, <laughs> the first like poem that yeah. she read. Yeah. So I wanted to have a kind of dialogue here. And a rural mansion too. The rain is flat and the umbrella is not. Yeah, the rain is flat or horizontal, you could say. The rain is horizontal, but the umbrella is not. And I think that's, you know what it sounds like? It sounds like the umbrella is catching very powerful rain. It's raining so hard it's going horizontally. And you know, but in that sense I think it's a really positive <laughs> I think it's you gonna have a windfall. Can I take one of those? Anyone? Susan. Hi, it's okay. What will happen next week? I have something in mind, but I won't. Um, there's happen to you? Yes. What will happen next week? Okay. Can you on day one? This car show up in the Nicaragua a lot. So, uh, you, you don't need to lock the door. <laughs> so, yeah, but the dog must double up. You must double up on dog. So no need to lock the door, but double up on dog. That's actually exactly what I expected. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. Someone's going to be It's the London Book Fair, and I have some difficult meetings coming up. Oh. So, some good and some. So this is very good. Cool. Mm. Thank you. I'm packing an extra dog. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Everybody. Exactly. <laughs>